Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of COVID Conversations with Colleges. Tonight we have FAU, Eckerd, and Embry Riddle. Uh, we're happy to have them and thank you uh, for coming tonight. Uh, just a couple housekeeping. housekeeping. Oh, I'm sorry, we just. Let's fix that. Uh, so a couple housekeeping issues. Uh, if you have, uh, we, we've got a couple handouts uh, for this webinar. Uh, if you go into the go to webinar control panel and click on the, the handout section, uh, there's a couple of things. It's just uh, gr gr gratuitous self-promotion from score at the top. Um, but there's some useful information in there for you as well. Uh, additionally, if you have any audio difficulties, uh, during the presentation, if you click on the audio, you'll have the ability to call in and listen uh, on your cell phone while still watching the visual presentation on your computer screen. It has happened a couple of times. Uh, so if you have the difficulty, I'd go there first um, and see if that solves the problem. Quick poll, just to get an idea of who is in our audience. I uh, just wanna know uh, two things, who you are, if you can, I'm going to give you a couple seconds to uh, about 30 seconds if you guys can answer this. Uh, and that way we can get an idea of who's in the audience. I got about 70% of the audience so far. I'll leave it open for about another 10 seconds. All right, closing that poll, just so everyone's aware. Uh, oops. It, it, it was about 62% uh, independent educational consultants, 29% um, rising seniors, and the rest uh, were, were uh, other high school students, graduates and other high school students. And, and then if you can just let us know where you are so we can get an idea of where everyone's coming from. Seventy-five percent. All right, I'm going to close the poll now. So the majority is from Florida, um, but we got people from all over the country, it looks like. All right, now on to our presenters. First, uh, we have Mara Flasher. Uh, she has served as the Executive Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Florida Atlantic University for nearly two years. Prior to returning home to South Florida, Mara served as the Director of Academic Admissions at Augusta University, a public research and health sciences focused university in Augusta, in Augusta Georgia for two years. Her previous experience includes 16 years in admissions at Iowa State University, a land grant and AAU institution. She spent eight years serving as Associate Director of Freshman and International Admission. Mara has her Master's in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies from Iowa State University and Bachelor's in Criminology from the University of South Florida, where she began her career at admissions. Her portfolio includes oversight for new student rec recruitment, scholarship committees, public speaking, building relationships across, uh, across campus and in the community, campus visit programs, application review, and innovating initiatives to promote access and higher education. Next up, we have Jake Brown, the Director of Admissions at Eckerd College in St. Pete, Florida, a post he has had since May of 2014. Prior to Eckerd, he had most re recently served as Director of Admissions at Wagner College in Staten Island, New York. He continues to directly recruit students in California, Canada, Europe and in private high schools in the Tampa Bay region. He received his Bachelor's of Arts in History with a minor in French, as well as a master's degree in business administration from Wagner. Being, a, being that Eckert is widely considered the pet friendliest campus in the United States, his dog Hannah considers himself the director of non-human admission in college. I should have gotten a picture of the dog. <laughs> I'll, and, I'll send a picture of the dog as a follow-up, I promise. Excellent. <laughs> and finally, we have Adrian Ravzoli, 
uh, the Assistant Director of Admissions at, um, at Embry-Riddle, originally handling from New Jersey. She has lived in Florida for well over 25 years and considers South Florida her home. She is the admission, admissions representative that oversees all of Southeast and Southwest Florida, all U.S. territories, including Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands, as well as all U.S. citizens living overseas. She has been with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University since 2007 and has had several positions, including financial aid administrator and academic advisor for new students. Prior to that, she worked for many years in the private sector in finance and banking fraud analysis. And our uh, facilitator and host tonight is Barbara Leventhal, a uh, representative from Score at the Top and Judah Rabinovitz Educational Associates, Educational Consultant. Um, Barbara brings to our educational consulting practice more than 30 years of experience as a teacher, administrator, and college counselor. She likes to say that all parents take great pride in the special qualities of their children. My role is to define those qualities and channel them in unique ways that tell a compelling story for college admission. Many parents know Barbara as the guru behind student projects. Her ideas inspire students to create original projects based on their interests. Fully engaged with her protégés, she then guides them through to project implementation. Some have created projects that drew, that drew thousands of dollars in donations. Others have written and published Amazon best-selling books. So a little bit about tonight's format. Uh, each of the colleges are going to give uh, short presentations in alphabetical order. Uh, then we will have a Q&A session led by Barbara. At any time during the presentations, if you guys have questions, please submit them through the GoToWebinar uh, control panel. And at the end of the um, at the end of Barbara's Q&A sessions, I'll pop in to get through as many of your questions as we can, uh, and anything else we will try to answer via email. Uh, so I am now going to turn this over to Jake, um, and let's see here. Jake, there you go. And Jake, you can start I'm presenting. I'm gonna do that. Can you see, let me move this over here. Maybe this helps. Can you see that screen? Yes. You can, PowerPoint, perfect. That looks good, just double checking. Sorry, we, no, we don't, we're not seeing a PowerPoint, we see your, your email. Oh gosh, don't read that. <laughs> now you see it? <laughs> now we see it, yes. Okay, perfect, thanks so much. This is one of the first times I'm using this platform, so Apologies. Well, thank you so much for the introduction. Yes, my name is uh, Jacob Brown. I'm the director of admission at Eckerd College. Eckerd College is located in St. Petersburg, Florida. So on the west coast of Florida in the Tampa Bay metropolitan region. Um, we are literally on the Florida's Gulf Coast. So this is a short or small aerial, cropped out aerial that shows Boca Siega Bay. I'll have um, more photos of campus later. One of the really interesting things about Eckerd is our geographic reach. So we're a college of about 1,900 um, undergraduates, undergraduate only, so no graduate students, but 1,900 students. 80% um, of those students come from outside of the state of Florida. So you'll see on this slide, 47 um, states and 41 different countries are represented in our student body. It's also very, very residential. So 90% of our students live on campus, live with us on campus all four years. And on average, our students are traveling more than a thousand miles from home to come to Eckerd. That's quite different than most of your other college bound students where the average distance traveled from a student's home to their college is about 200 to 250 miles. And so Eckerd students, um, you're doing four to five times that distance commitment. So you can start to make um, some generalizations that you know, Eckerd students tend to be a little bit more adventurous. They are okay and they're comfortable being the only one potentially from their high school coming to join us on campus. Um, you know, and, and I think that's very, very different for a number of students who are looking for this next chapter and to go to college. Eckerd is also on a 414 academic calendar. So we don't have a semester or trimester system, but it's called 414. And it relates to the number of courses a student takes in um, their academic year. So the four courses would happen in the fall term, 
you would also take as a student four courses in the spring. And then every year, a student will take one course in a short term, so one class for three weeks. Sophomore, junior, and senior year, that course happens in the month of January for what we call winter term. However, in your first year, that happens at the very beginning in what we call autumn term. This is a picture from our Ceremony of Lights. This is our sort of bookend where commencement is the, uh, the one bookend. Ceremony of Lights where we welcome you to campus is the other side of that bookend. And this is the beginning of your three week autumn term with us. It happens right before fall term. So you move in, you meet your roommate, um, and then your first class is the next day. But instead of a two or three day orientation that most colleges offer, we're with our first year students and only our first year students for three entire weeks. During this time, you also will take your first academic course. So this is a typical sample schedule of autumn term. Um, so every day for three weeks, you're going to go to class. Um, then obviously lunchtime. And then we'll also um, put in some community building events, more typical orientation activities, getting to know members of your fellow class, particularly because probably most of you will not know each other considering the geographic reach of our students, getting to know St. Petersburg, getting to know about different majors and how to get involved on campus and find a campus job. And then obviously every day, you're going to have to prepare for class. This is our way to really start to get you to understand as a student leaving high school, going to college, what it will take to be academically um, successful on a college campus. Because no matter where you go, no matter how well you're prepared, the, the biggest hurdle will be how you manage your time. You're gonna spend far less time in the classroom in college than you are outside of the classroom. But more time will be expected of you to prepare. So typically for most colleges, every hour of class time, you're to prepare two to three times that. Most college courses will meet for three hours a week per class. These are the typical courses that we offer. They're not major specific, um, but they look at one particular uh, question or issue or problem from different perspectives. Um, and so you're not saying, okay, I, I, need to, I wanna be this type of major, therefore I need this course. And if I don't get it, I'm off the right track. This is really our way to start to introduce you into liberal arts and sciences and thinking outside of certain disciplines. As I mentioned, there's also co-curricular programming. So these are some samples of uh, experiences that you will have during autumn term. Some are more serious, like you know, money matters um, or healthy expectations, how to be healthy and safe on a college campus. Other things are more fun, like our Contiki rap race. Ecker College is a liberal arts and science college. And as I mentioned, it's only undergraduate. And so I know a lot of you might be in the audience confused or not quite sure about what a liberal arts and science education is about. Yes, you will have your major, you will get your depth um, and really understand your field of study, but we also provide you your breadth. So you start to see how issues related to your major, whether it's politics or the environment or science related, really is impacted, not just within the vacuum of your discipline, but in lots of different ways. And we're also there to teach you some of the soft skills that actually tend to be more important as you start to look for jobs and become a professional. How to think creatively and critically, how to read between the lines, how to see those connections between disciplines. And so we've placed a lot of focus on that very solid undergraduate liberal arts and science uh, foundation. The way that you do that is through a lot of mentoring. So that autumn term course, will have a faculty mentor. The faculty mentor is the professor for that autumn term class, and they're teaching the same 20 or 22 students. You're with that faculty mentor every day for the first three weeks of college. So as you're starting to transition from high school and home to college and being here on campus, they're there helping aid in your transition. That mentor stays throughout the entire first year for a series of courses we call human experience. And so human experience is another course that serves as that foundation to what you will start to learn in the liberal arts and science um, way, how to think creatively, how to look at old texts and really understand how they compare to more contemporary works. Once you declare your discipline, so all of our students who come into Eckerd are technically undecided. Typically you will uh, declare your discipline in spring of your first year, but you have two years to do it. But once you declare your discipline, you'll have a faculty mentor 
within that specific field of study who will talk to you about research opportunities, internship opportunities, will mentor and guide you and connect you with other alums that they have mentored in the larger Eckerd network. This is a list um, of, I believe that's a full list. Oh, here we go. This is a list of our majors, some of our most popular majors, certainly marine sciences or flagship program. Um, and then environmental studies is very popular, animal studies, um, international relations and global affairs, as well as psychology round out the top five majors and programs. As I mentioned, study abroad is also an important aspect of the Eckerd experience. And through our 414 academic calendar, a lot of students will get to do the study abroad experience through winter term, through that three weeks in January. So as a first year student, you're gonna do autumn term, then fall, then spring. Subsequent years, you'll start with fall and do a January winter term. And so a lot of our winter term courses will be an Eckerd course taught by an Eckerd faculty member and an Eckerd, and be just for Eckerd students in one of 25 different destinations abroad. But we also have more traditional semester long study abroad experiences. And you may have seen that statistic come up. About 70% of our students will study abroad at least once before they graduate. The final piece, I think I've got a minute or two left that I wanted to mention to you is that Eckerd is part of the book, Colleges That Change Lives. And there's uh, 40 colleges featured in this book. Um, it's in its fourth edition, and these are really colleges that A, are focused on the undergraduate experience, are focused on mentoring, focused on liberal arts and science, and as a grouping of colleges, we are passionate about you trying to find your fit, to really use fit and a student-centered approach to the admission process. And so hopefully this will give you some highlighted information about Eckerd, but if um, you're starting to think that it might be a good fit, I'd certainly be willing to answer additional questions. Thanks so much, Jake. I'm going to next give it to uh, Adrian. And I kept on time, right? You did, thank you. Ooh. All right, Adrian, you're up. Perfect. Um, so let's see if you can see my screen. Hey, can everybody see that? We can see it, yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'm gonna try and follow up Jake's presentation, which was fantastic. I don't have uh, quite as many pictures on there, um, but for anyone that is interested, uh, Embry-Riddle does have a virtual tour online for any of our students. Um, we are actually also reopening campus up to tours for students um, starting on Monday. So if students would like to sign up, we are practicing a lot of social distance protocols, um, a lot of like you know wearing masks we will provide them for you when you come to campus we do temperature checks when you arrive on campus so if anyone is interested in touring our campus uh, you are welcome to do so and start planning for those on monday so again this is embry riddle aeronautical university and for those of us that may those of you that may not have heard of us we are actually the world's largest fully accredited university that specializes in aviation and aerospace we are located in Daytona Beach, Florida. So we are about an hour east of Orlando, uh, about an hour and a half or so south of Jacksonville. But very importantly for a lot of my engineering students, we're a little less than an hour from Kennedy Space Center. Um, we are a traditional campus. Uh, we are residential, which means that we do offer dorms and students are required to live on campus for the first two years. Um, we consider that our position in Central Florida has excellent flight conditions. Um, we are the largest and oldest flight program in the country. Our school was founded in 1926 and has provided flight training ever since. So if that is something that I know uh, some of our audience members are interested in, I'd be happy to answer questions about our flight program. Um, again, residential campus. Um, our campus is about a little less than 7,000 students. Our population is about 23% female. We represent all 50 states and most US territories, and we actually also represent about 120 different countries on campus. So very diverse campus. Um, for anyone that's interested in doing anything that has to do with aviation, with um, security and intelligence, with engineering, uh, we are a very specific, very niche school, so that's why people seek us out. Also, I do want to mention that we do offer all four branches of ROTC on our campus. We have Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines through the Navy. 
and we are actually the largest Air Force detachment. We are also the largest provider of pilots to the Air Force, second to the Air Force Academy. So very important to a lot of my students um, when they talk about wanting to come to Embry-Riddle and what they can do with their careers. Of course, it, finding a job is crucial. I just wanted to provide a quick snapshot of some of the recent companies that have been hiring our students. We have a very comprehensive um, department on campus that's called Career Services. Part of what they do, they do host um, you know, mock interviews, they do do resume reviews with students, but one of the most important things that they do is they host an industry fair. We have one twice a year on our campus and we host anywhere from 150 Mara, your, uh, your mic came off. Sorry, Adrian, your mic came off. Well, it looks like we might have lost Adrian. Uh, let me turn it over to Mara and we can have uh, Adrian come back. Yes. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I, uh, there we go. All good, Jason? Yep, you're all good. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I want to talk today about Florida Atlantic University. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, we are in Boca Raton, Florida, which is uh, in Broward County, in between Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach, about two miles from the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, some highlights for us in terms of the types of institution that we are. We are a uh, Hispanic serving institution, which means that over 25% of our students identify as uh, Latino or Latina. We're also part of the State University System of Florida and governed by the Board of Governors for the State of Florida. Uh, if anybody is familiar with the source ladders.com, it uh, looks at uh, things like the cost of education, competitiveness, uh, earnings after graduation and such. We were named a top 10 best total package and the number one institution in Florida for those points in the outcome of an undergraduate education. As you're looking at your academic options, I'm uh, showing you here a list of all of the different programs that you might be interested in. And so we uh, offer everything from liberal arts and sciences to engineering, uh, very competitive nursing program, school of architecture. Uh, a, a unique offering we have is our Wilkes Honors College, which is part of Florida Atlantic University uh, on our Jupiter campus as well. At uh, Florida Atlantic University, after a student is offered admission, they are part of what we call our success network. So a unique feature of FAU is you are assigned as a professional staff person who works in financial aid, someone who works in career center, as well as an academic advisor. And so you have access to three professional staff members that are in place to support you from the time that you were admitted all the way up through graduation with navigating Florida Atlantic, with getting student services, any questions, any changes in your situation, anytime you're not sure where to go, you have three individuals full-time at the university that are here to serve you. I mentioned our Wilkes Honors College. Uh, that is a part of Florida Atlantic University and our Jupiter campus. So students can apply directly to the Wilkes Honors College if you are looking for a residential liberal arts education. That's part of the larger FAU. Uh, so you have all the resources of undergraduate research here in Boca or in Jupiter at that campus. If you're not looking for a fully immersive honors experience, we have a university honors program that you can join upon enrolling at Florida Atlantic that engages you with your learning and connects you to a number of different academic resources to en enrich your academic experience. Some pieces of FAU that are unique that you may or may not be familiar with is we have a seven-year BSMD. Uh, we call it our Med Direct program with the FAU College of Medicine. Um, very competitive program and students apply to FAU and must be admitted by January 1st each year. 
And then there is a supplemental application that students complete to also uh, be complete early part of January. Our Wilkes Medical Scholars Program is for our Honors College students. They have a very uh, similar program there. Tech Runway for all of our entrepreneurs out there. We have some terrific ways that you can connect to uh, form a small business, uh, get grants, and potentially win uh, business competitions for your innovation. The Charney Diplomacy Program uh, is something that FAU competes in nationally every year, and our students uh, become very adept in debates, uh, in policy writing, in public speaking. And this is uh, something that our students have an opportunity to do regardless of what program they may be a part of. Uh, you may not know that we have six unique campuses. So all the way from uh, the downtown Fort Lauderdale to just north of our Jupiter campus in Harbor Branch, uh, just uh, outside of Port St. Lucie is our uh, Marine Science and our Harbor Branch Oceanographic Institute. Uh, most students are here in Boca, outside of Boca, our Jupiter campus for the Honors College as well as a School of Architecture is downtown Fort Lauderdale. Our Davie campus is right across from Broward College, so many of our transfer students don't have to go anywhere for their FAU experience. Of course, you're gonna be looking for uh, hands-on experience as a part of your education, being in the heart of South Florida and what we call the Tri-County area. You're in a big part of the economic engine for the state. So you have opportunities for internships as well as getting involved in student life. Uh, so getting experience as well as having some fun. We have a number of construction projects happening on campus that include expanses to our student union. We have a new residence hall going up. I can actually see it right outside my window here. We're adding about 600 beds to our campus uh, next August of 2021. We've added some academic support in our uh, Schmidt family complex. And in our library, the Gruber Sandbox is going to be an artificial intelligence lab that students in any major can get involved in. There's just a couple short steps in applying to FAU. Uh, number one, please apply and please apply only once. Uh, we have our own application on our website, also have the common application. Uh, and so we'd use self-reported grades, self-reported test scores as a part of our process. When students apply, they'll be considered for fall entry or summer entry. Uh, you can indicate that on your application, but we also will consider you for all of the different types and pathways for entering Florida Atlantic. We're really looking at a rigorous curriculum coming outside of uh, your, your high school environment, assuming the majority of you are, are coming from a high school environment, and really looking at your academic cor courses, uh, your rigor, and uh, if you're going into STEM disciplines, really important that you consider your math and science choices in your 11th and 12th grade years. Uh, we're seeing a number of students that are uh, maybe not making the best choices that they can, and we really want to help our students be prepared for success at, at FAU. Uh, here's our middle 50 percent uh, percentiles and profiles that you can see based on last year. And I think that should be uh, everything about FAU. Great. Thanks, Adrian. I know we got, um, oh, uh, oh, we got Adrian back. So I'm going to turn it back over to Adrian so she can finish up. <laughs> Adrian, you're muted still. Oh, one more time. There you go. Nope, we still can't hear you. Oh, Adrian, I think you whenever your computer might have reset, something happened. Oh, 
you want to try to um, call in and we can we'll, we'll start with the Q and A and see if you can call in with the audio. Barbara, you want to come on? Hello. Okay, we just had a, a little technical difficulty with Embry Riddle, but we're going to start with some of our questions. I see Jacob Brown, Mara's here. So we'll start with a couple of the easy questions. A lot of parents before the broadcast, they want to know if you're on the Common App, could you put your thumb up? Okay. If you intend to be test optional last, next year. Okay. Um, if you're planning to super score the tests. Okay. Um, they want to know what changes do you expect in the admissions policy or the admissions process for next year? So, Jacob, why don't you go first and then Mara, you're next. Sure, absolutely. Um, so we just uh, released or announced about a month ago that we're going test optional for 2021 as, as well as 2022. So that will be a pilot program um, and then we'll reassess along with faculty. So that certainly will be a change. Um, we also understand that a number of students are currently in pass-fail um, grading as opposed to, you know, A, B, C, D, F. Um, and so we'll work with students. Um, beyond that, you know, not much will change in terms of our policy, but I think the way that we approach college admission will change. And it will change on, on your side as the student, and it will change on our side as the college. And I think, you know, many of you probably would want to be visiting colleges over the summer or this past spring. Um, and so hopefully, you're seeing um, good content come out and colleges uh, virtually. Uh, virtually. Mara, same or do you have a different view? I, I, very similar. I, 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 we similar are not I, test optional, not so all of our requirements for FAU and the state university system remain the same. Um, I think change-wise, there will be changes to how students are able to visit campus uh, with social distancing is is here to stay. Uh, so I think we uh, all of our institutions will be trying to find safe uh, and healthy ways to accommodate families that want to visit, uh, both for them as well as for our staff. Um, I also think this will impact how colleges and universities start recruiting this year, or this fall. Um, high schools may not let us visit. Uh, they may be limiting the number of persons who can come onto their school campuses. So I think that um, we're just entering an age of doing relationships and building rapport a little bit differently. And so this uh, virtual uh, relationship that we have and that we've all started, it's here to stay. And uh, we all have to figure out how to do it a little bit better and, and make tweaks that work for us and our respective students. Welcome back, Adrian. Thank you. I apologize for the uh, technical difficulty. So we're doing the questions, a couple of questions and answers now. So one of the questions from the parents was relative to recommendations. And what she said in her question was, she would hope that any teacher who was asked to be a recommender, who didn't have something nice to say, would have told the students, I'm sorry, I can't speak for you. So what they're trying to understand is, if you're getting all positive recommendations, what is the value of that? You want me to go first, maybe? I'll start it off. Um, sometimes we find things in the recommendation that are very telling to who you are as a student. So recommendations do not come in shades of black and white. They're not good recommendations or bad recommendations but you want to use the recommendation, um, and for ECHR we require one, some other schools may require others, as an insight, another person's insight, into who you are as a student or as a person. And so find out, is there an area that isn't coming through in your common application? Um, 
or in your personal essay. And so this gives us another glimpse, or sometimes we're really just bad about talking about ourselves and bragging about ourselves. So this is another person's way to say, no, they are a leader. Even if they're not saying they're a leader, they are, or they're a little shy and, it, and in the right place, they're gonna come out of their shell a little bit. So it's not a bad or good recommendation. More often than not, it's just, it's someone else's perspective. How a Adrian, can you tell us how AP, IB, honors, and ACE credits are treated? Of course, um, we do actually offer college credit for uh, certain classes, certain tests for IB, for AP. Uh, we do encourage students to do dual enrollment. Oftentimes, a lot of our students come in having completed at least the first semester, if not the first year. And that actually gives you some nice leeway to be able to indulge in a minor to add on and be able to carry a full-time schedule with students as well. Uh, we do have a list of all the classes, the exam scores that we'll accept. It's all on our website for any student that's interested in seeing, should I take this AP class? What scores will I need? Or if I'm doing IB, should I take high level? Should I take standard level? What will the will accept? So that's all on our website. Same with ACE and Cambridge. We will offer college credit for, for many of those as well. I think one of the questions that's on everyone's mind is, how do you think the pandemic has changed higher education? What changes do you see, Maura? Well, I think the changes that we have been forced into involve other modalities of learning, like online education. Um, and that online education does potentially, uh, depending on the delivery method, allow for uh, flexibility in time of day of learning depending on how it's how it's presented from your instructor um, it also allows students to potentially work at their own pace um, it potentially also allows different tools that students can use for learning whether it's online resources and articles or being able to upload documents versus turning in a physical piece of paper um, it, it also potentially allows students to ask questions that they may not ask one-on-one -on -one in front of a class. Uh, we've surveyed our students that are currently, that just finished the term, um, and, and one of the results we saw of FAU students was they were interacting with their professor more on an individual basis because they could message that professor, they could uh, have a discussion in a chat, where they didn't feel like they had pressure from their whole class, either by taking time or by monopolizing a conversation. And that was something our students saw as a positive for the, the online learning experience. Um, I think also for students and families and faculty, for really everyone who have any number of uh, health concerns or are caretakers for others, I think that we have seen um, a hyper focus on that caretaking and trying to blend that with our work duties, with our educational duties. And I think there are some folks that are figuring it out. I think it's been really hard for a lot of folks too. Um, and so I think that there's a lot more humanity um, in the workplace, but also in education around everybody has this other life outside of when they're in school You're right. and and seeing the dog walk by or seeing somebody's cat jump up on their computer while they're trying to learn i've you know jacob's smiling i think we've all seen that in in all of our daily uh engagements and i think it's really brought a humanity and a compassion to the learning environment that maybe wasn't there before thank you Jake, you alluded to a, a really broad on-campus experience, and particularly to studying abroad. If students aren't able to travel this fall, how do you plan to augment those experiences? I think that's a great question, you know, and, and at some point, we will get through this. And so it may not be this year, right? And so if you're a first-year student, oftentimes maybe you aren't anyway, studying abroad in the first year. But I think an international education, looking at other countries, 
other cultures, other communities will be even more important um, post COVID than before. And it's one of those high impact practices that we intend once it's safe to do so, right? We wanna make sure that you know, students are, are, are not putting themselves or their classmates or their faculty at risk. Um, but we certainly do not believe that study abroad as well as bringing international students onto a college campus has gone away. It may not happen um, this year, may not happen this semester. I'm not quite sure if it'll look differently. I think it just may not happen, um, but we have to remain hopeful that there will be a vaccine. Um, and I know there's a lot of colleges and universities working toward that end. Um, and we will, again, be able to travel internationally. And it's important to do it. It's an important part of your development um, as a young adult. Okay, on a lighter note. Yeah, that was really gloom. Really cool. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's downer. So let's bring it up a little bit. Tell me about a quirky tradition on your campus, Adrian. Let's start with you. You know, this is a good question because um, I was trying to think of what what we do that's quirky at Embry Riddle. Everybody there is so focused and so on point with what they're doing, but. Um, we actually do have a spirit rock on our campus. It's just a very large nondescript boulder that gets painted and decorated depending on the situation, anything that they want to celebrate. Recently it had graduation colors on there. Um, when the earthquake in Ecuador happened a couple of years back, someone actually painted very detailed the Ecuadorian flag on there. So it's just a very neat way of seeing our kids express themselves, express their creativity. Um, you know, I think that that's a fantastic thing that, that we really encourage our students to do, that there's there's fun and there's more than just being inside the classroom or inside the cockpit. So. Laura? Yeah, I, I think from the, the, the fun yeah, and social I, I side, the, the, the fun and social side, we have something called the bonfire and that is um around the early start of football season and it's a spirited um they light a a um model of the opposite team's mascot on fire and have bands and have all kinds of activities for the students to really build community around uh that game and around the students uh, that's that's one uh, that I would say are we're trying to figure out if we're going to be able to do that this fall. But it is definitely a part of tradition that our students uh, remark and talk about. If you if you asked any of our tour guides, that'd be one of the first things they spoke about. So it's it's a lot of fun for the students. OK, I lost my own audio, but I assume that you can all hear me, right? So. The next question is, what advice can you give to students about the 250 word essay that they've added to the Common App about COVID-19? COVID well, I don't know if it's necessarily a requirement. I don't know if anyone else knows that. I think it's optional, right? Yeah, I was going to ask too. I'm not sure. So, if it's optional, it is optional. And your experience, I don't, I don't want to downplay this, but if your experience is like many people's experiences, we're going to understand that we're all yeah. living through this right now. However, there might have been some experiences, um, parent loss of job loss of a family member due to COVID-19, someone who was really, really close to you. Um, use that carefully because we're going to be reading this a lot. And so your experience might not be as dynamic and, and as unique as others. But if you feel that there is a reason we need to know something to get a really good sense in your application, then use it. Um, if it's uh, the fact that you did online learning, online learning, what's the pass fail system? There's lots of students who who've done that. So that might not be the most unique. Um, 
I, I would say just to echo that and, and to be thoughtful. I, you know, if and, it, and since it is optional, if you don't feel that your story is unique or that you can really communicate that COVID did impact you truly and personally, it's okay to skip it. it it's optional. Um, unless you receive direction from a university that you're applying to, that they really do want to hear from you about that topic. Um, so, you know, being thoughtful and, and being genuine um, would, would be always, I think, any of our guidance on when you're submitting some work about yourself and your experience. Um, many kids miss the social aspects of school, and of course, they'll miss it if the campuses aren't ready to open. How are you planning to engage kids in the social process, in the life of your college? Well, we have taken it upon ourselves to um, engage our students through social media. We've done it prior to the uh, pandemic. We are continuing to do it and seeing a lot more activity now. Uh, students are finding camaraderie in these social media platforms. They're meeting students that you know, may come from the opposite end of the globe, but they're in the same major, they share the same interests, um, they share similar hobbies. So we definitely encourage that. We think that it's going to continue moving forward. Um, you know, like like Maura said earlier, it's it's brought a sense of community, it brought people closer together, and you're learning more about people and their their personal lives. It's not just what you see in the classroom and you don't really get to know people Otherwise, you're, you're peeling back the layers and really getting to um, to make friends on a deeper level. And I feel like that's going to continue if we continue to use these these methods that students are are using now. Um, they're using all sorts of social media platforms from Facebook to Snapchat to Instagram um, and sharing their passions. And I think that that's that's going to continue moving forward. And it, it does tie the sociability together. And I think we're the three of us are just really fortunate that we're in Florida, we're in Florida, um, and so it's easier to socialize when you're a school that's located in our state. Um, you know, we don't get snow for the majority of your school year, where or it's too cold to go outside. So I think for a lot of us, we'll be doing um, probably even more outside events. Yeah, we're we're calling students. We're using social media. We're we're using texts. Uh, we're trying to meet students as well as their family members uh, where they are. Um, and so, you know, I think we're, I think all of us are trying to find, there, I don't, there's not one thing that's working the best. Um, it takes a, a number of channels to engage with our students, to engage with our family members, and uh, we're trying all of them. Well, usually I ask students, if you had a minute in the elevator with the admissions director, what would you tell them? Why should they choose you? So let's reverse it. If you had a minute in the elevator with a student, what would you tell them about why they should choose you? So now you want me to boil down my 10 minutes into one minute. <laughs> you got it. Give us the elevator pitch. I'm going to hit the stop on the elevator before we get to another floor. Well, you know, I think for Eckerd, you know, it is a small undergraduate only college where students are residential, where they come from greater distances than probably most colleges and universities, where it's also on the water. So if you love studying near the water, on the water, in the water, um, Eckerd's a pretty good place for you. It is. Mara, how mm -hmm. about you? What's the one minute elevator pitch? Yeah, I, I think, you know, again, location, location, location. Um, Florida Atlantic is two miles from the beach and uh, we're in the heart of the South Florida economic engine. So if you're looking for a coastal lifestyle, if you are looking for uh, Fortune 500 or entrepreneurial companies for internships and jobs, you don't have to go anywhere if you're in Boca Raton. Uh, you, know, you, you can get part-time jobs, full-time jobs after graduation you know, whether it's a school district or a pharmaceutical company, there's no better place to be in Florida, number one, but South Florida, you have so many options. Um, and, and for those of you that uh, like the travel, 
you know, you're within 50 miles of three international airports. You can go anywhere. Great. Adrian? Uh, well, I think similarly, it's not so much location, location, even though being close to Kennedy Space Center is a big draw. Um, if you love to fly, if you like to engineer, if you like to look beyond and technology is your bread and butter, there's no place better than Embry-Riddle. We are ranked number one for a lot of our engineering programs for a reason. We are, again, the largest and oldest running flight program in the country for a reason. And the one thing I didn't get to say during my presentation, thanks to my technical difficulty, but if you want to work for NASA, you want to work for SpaceX, you want to work for Boeing, no better place than us to get you through the door because it's not because I work there, but truly it's it's an incredible school and the reputation of the school and the education you receive there will carry you very, very far. It will take you literally out of this world. Oh, literally. So what advice would you give to the parents of eighth graders, ninth graders, and 10th graders who really are just starting to think about the college process. Jake, you want to start? Yeah, sure. I think you know, as you start the college process, you want a pretty, you know, broad lens at the very beginning. And you're going to narrow this down and be more focused about it. But I also would say to parents, don't let the college process start to inundate your lives. Um, Certainly junior and senior year go by very, very quickly in high school. Um, but there's a lot of time for exploration. So start small, but also enjoy the beginning of your high school experience. Enjoy kind of growing up still. Um, and yeah, don't let it, don't let it take over your life too much. Okay. Mara, what advice would you give to the class of 2021? I think I would say, or I think I will say, that um, it's okay to be a high school student while you're in high school. You know, this this next year is going to go quickly. Um, while you think you've been sitting around or maybe inactive due to COVID, you know, you have um, you have only a few more months as you and your family start making decisions and, and things of that sort. So um, enjoy enjoy high school, enjoy your senior year, work hard. Um, you know, this is the time of year where admissions directors, uh, y'all make us sweat a little bit. We're starting to get those final high school transcripts in, and we're uh, starting to match that up with your self-reported record, and we're trying to make sure that you are who you said you were. Um, and so, you know, high school's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Uh, please work hard all the way until the end of the year, uh, because... I don't know a student who's ever told me that college is easier than high school. So you're setting the banquet table for your next meal of sorts, and we want you to be as prepared as possible. Uh, so I would say to enjoy high school, uh, continue to work hard. What you do your senior year does matter. Um, if you're looking at your senior year schedule and it looks a little light, I would challenge you to uh, unlighten that load a little bit so that you really are prepared for the rigors of your first year of college. Uh, we all want you to be prepared and uh, we want us all see you be extremely successful. Adrian, what do you think parents would be surprised to find out about the applicant pools? Not just at your college, but probably at most of them. Um, I don't know what exactly might surprise parents because students, come from all different walks of life, um, so many different interests. You might see some people that you never expected them to be interested in the majors that they're wanting to go into in college um, or have the hobbies that they have that might actually earn them a scholarship or, you know, a hidden talent, um, a, a dream of pursuing something that, you, you know, if you have someone that may have never traveled, but their dream is to go live overseas someday, things like that. I think that everybody has a unique story um everybody i wouldn't say there's necessarily a surprise it's just where they're going to find themselves where they're going to be able to explore who they want to be and 
I think parents are mostly going to be surprised at how resilient the kids are. You know, this, this is a big test of what we're going through right now. And parents might think that because students don't demonstrate a whole lot of maturity when they are in high school, when you finally do let them spread their wings and leave the nest, it, you'll be very, very surprised at how well they do at how well they adapt and how well they transition into becoming young adults and you know, not needing parents to hold their hands as much. And, and I think that's the most surprising thing of all for, for parents. And we're getting to the top of the hour, but Adrian, I have a couple questions that were specifically to Embry-Riddle. So parent would like to know um, what degrees are best for those who are interested in becoming professional pilots? Well, the main degree that we offer for a professional pilot is called aeronautical science. And that's a four-year academic program that ties in also flight training for four years. So we offer all the flight licenses and ratings, beginning with a private pilot license, all the way up to certified flight instructor and instructor instrument. We do also have another option for families to consider, which is called aeronautics. It's the same exact academic program as an aeronautical science major, but your student can choose to actually fly off campus instead. Um, there are pros and cons to following our flight training versus flying off campus and getting your licenses there. I definitely encourage a family to reach out to us to explore that if, if they want to find out what would benefit them best. Um, but those would be the two majors that, that we offer for flight for a professional pilot program. Okay, we're just coming to the top of the hour. So Jason, do you have any questions from our viewers? I have got a couple of questions. Let me just uh, grab them. Uh, let's see here. Um, so when is Eckerd going to open up for campus tours? We are opening up on the 22nd of June. Um, and as I believe maybe Adrian said, maybe Mara said as well, it will be limited. Um, we'll ask you to wear a face mask. We'll take your temperature. Um, but we will open up for tours on the 22nd. And uh, if for all, for all three of you, uh, if, if colleges uh, are on both their the Common App and have their own app, uh, is there any app that you would like to see more of than the other? No, only use one. Please don't apply more than once. <laughs> I, I think the question is, do you do you prefer your own no, app? I no, I understand. Um, no, we, we have no preference, but we're seeing students submit multiple applications and there's just no reason for it. It actually causes some problems with our student account. So no, no preference, just apply once. We don't actually accept the Common App at all. We only take our own application available on our website. And for the class of 2021, the application is now open. So if anyone is interested in applying, they can do so now. Um, and have any of you considered quick admits for students who have met all of your admissions criteria? Well, we have not. Um, we review holistically, so it's beyond grades and test scores for us. So uh, when you apply to Eckerd, um, you're going to have two reviews, one by your admission counselor, then another by committee. So um, we try to turn them around pretty quickly, but we want to take some time with them. Same with us, um, we, uh, we do view applications holistically, so there's no unique formula to if you meet this GPA and this SAT score um, that you can get in. It's, we look at the big picture, which is why letters of recommendation are big, um, personal essays are big as well with us. And um, I know I didn't get a chance to say it during my presentation, but we are test optional. So students are not required to submit SAT or ACT test scores if you feel like they're not a good indicator of what you can do. Your transcript will tell me all four years of what you've done in high school. So that carries a lot more weight with it than one test on a Saturday. We look at a number of academic factors, so it's not necessarily uh, an easy mathematical formula, but we do turn our decisions around pretty quick, as long as we have all of the information that's needed. Great. And now one last question, unless any more come in quickly. Um, can you each speak to the financial aid offered at your colleges? 
Sure, so when you apply, you're automatically considered for merit scholarship. Um, we also have need-based aid, so about 96% of our students receive some type of scholarship from the college. For those of you in Florida, um, you still get some Florida grant money through Florida Ease Grants. That's $2,800 for Florida residents to go to a private college or university in Florida. Eckerd also gives $2,000 to Florida residents, and you are also still Bright Futures eligible for both levels at private colleges and will take Florida prepay. When students apply for admission to FAU, they are automatically considered for merit scholarships. We do have a January 1 uh, priority date to be considered for those merit scholarships. Uh, as a public university, you can certainly use Bright Futures here, and we do accept prepaid. And we have a number of uh, private foundation scholarships that students can apply for as well. And then if you're receiving scholarship money from your community, from the Rotary, from any of your local civic organizations or chapters of organizations, we can certainly work with students to make sure that that money is well utilized towards your expenses. Same with us. Um, when you are officially admitted to Embry-Riddle, you are uh, considered right away for merit scholarships based on your grades, your GPA, and other criteria. Um, we do also offer need-based aid, so we do encourage families to file their FAFSA, even if you don't feel like you'll qualify for anything uh, significant. We do still take your FAFSA results and look at our own criteria uh, to offer need-based aid. Um, as Mara and Jake mentioned, we do accept Bright Futures. We also accept Florida Prepaid. Um, it pays a little bit differently with us because we are a private school, but we'll be happy to discuss that with you. Um, we do offer the Florida Ease Grant as well. Um, and there is actually a foundation scholarship similar to what Maura mentioned. It's our term and endowed scholarships. So it's money from our endowment fund. Um, most of those scholarships tend to be geared towards our continuing students, but there are a handful that are for freshman students. And um, for anyone that's interested, if you go on our webpage and you go under the financial aid tab, the financial aid office has done a fantastic job of listing out a bunch of different external scholarships. Those are outside organizations that are not school affiliated. Um, it's a great springboard for where you can start looking for other scholarships that can help supplement your, uh, your aid with us. We do also accept ROTC scholarships and we are an NCAA division two school. So we do also offer athletic scholarships for certain programs. Great. That was all the questions that came in from the audience. So I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. And as says Barbara, Barbara. Um, uh, a couple of things we, we've done a bunch of these conversations with colleges in the past. Uh, so if you go to scorewebinars.com, links to all of our videos. We can get links to all of our previous uh, webinars, uh, as well as we, we did one on what test optional means, and recently we did one on application essays. Uh, coming tomorrow, we have a personal statement uh, brainstorming session. We have a couple of spots left, so if you're interested, if you go to www.personalstatement.guru, uh, that you, you could sign up there uh, and, and get in with uh, one of our uh, educational consultants, Kathy Hart, and uh, brainstorm essay ideas. Uh, next week, we're gonna be hosting Rollins, Stephen, uh, Stetson, and FIT, and the week afterwards, uh, GW and American, and we have more to come later in the month and next month. Uh, so again, all links to all these things will be on scorewebinars.com. Uh, thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you to our panelists, and thank you to Barbara, and uh, good night, and be safe, everybody. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.